why XRP will fail. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Now, it's important for you to understand, if you don't have any idea what XRP is, much less why XRP will fail, if you don't understand what XRP is, what Ripple is, or any of that, or maybe you, obviously you've heard about it and you're wondering what is it, um, if you start asking questions, you'll find two camps. You'll find the people who love it and you'll find the people who hate it for various reasons. Now, here's what I can tell you. I'm going to do my best to be unbiased. I named the video Why Ripple Will Fail because it was a popular search term, but here's the reality. The reason that it's going to fail, and I do believe it will fail, it doesn't mean that it can't be a profitable investment in the short term. Uh, however, I do believe that it probably will fail, but the reasons that it will fail are far and away against my foundational philosophical beliefs about the cryptocurrency space. Stay tuned and I'll explain to you what I mean. So why XRP will fail, let's just cover, if you've ever wondered what it is, how it works, what does it do, and what are the challenges facing it, that's what we're going to cover in this article right here, the uh, cryptocurrency problem, the, the Ripple currency problem. So Ripple Labs, the organization behind the XRP currency, has a big advantage in the blockchain industry. After launching their blockchain in 2012, Ripple Labs has been working with financial organizations to build one of the largest payment networks in the ecosystem proving one of the first B2B use cases for the fledgling, fledgling industry. Now you gotta give Ripple where credit is due here. Ripple has a phenomenal, I mean a phenomenal leadership team. They have, as a cryptocurrency, they have accomplished more things than just about all other cryptocurrencies. And in some cases, arguably, they've done several things better than Bitcoin or Ethereum obviously has. But let's keep going. Cryptocurrency enthusiasts have used this as a sign that XRP will be very valuable in the future. In order for these financial institutions to run any operation on the blockchain, they need to spend a small amount of XRP to complete the transaction. And according to the market, this means high value for XRP. Please understand this because people often say one of the first things that you'll learn is that, well, Ripple is not XRP. And just because Ripple is doing things as a company or as an organization doesn't mean that their XRP is going to be valuable. Well, this is the argument for why it is valuable. Because in order to send the financial the these financial institutions in order for these financial institutions to run any operation on the blockchain, they need to spend a small amount of XRP to complete the transaction. And according to the market, this means high value for XRP. Just this year, the price of Ripple has grown from below 0.01 per token to its current price of 0.25, cents, a 25x jump that rivals even the growth of Bitcoin. So why would anyone believe that XRP wouldn't be worth very much in the future? In this article, I'm going to make the case that despite Ripple Labs' impressive growth and strong partnership network, XRP has, become, has already become obsolete due to the emergence of permissioned blockchains in their market. That's important. By the way, I am not a fan of permission blockchains. I do believe we're going to see more and more of these for sure. And I'm going to cover that and give more of my thoughts on that as we continue to go into the article. But stay tuned for that because I've got some good info. You're not going to want to miss this. So what is Ripple? Before we can understand the problem, we need to understand what the, rip, what Ripple, what the Ripple does. Ripple is an open sourced semi-permissioned blockchain run by Ripple Labs. So Ripple is the name of the actual blockchain. The key word here is it's semi-permissioned. Semi-permissioned. Ripple is an open source semi-permissioned blockchain run by Ripple Labs. On the surface, there's a lot that Ripple offers that's not too different from other blockchain applications. It has a distributed ledger, a variety of wallet applications, and a native asset XRP. Where Ripple decided to differentiate itself from blockchains like Bitcoin is in its use of gateways, insurance, and trust lines. Here's a basic overview of these features. A blockchain gateway is a feature to allow for transfer of non-native assets, blockchain or otherwise, onto a particular blockchain. This includes a bank being able to lock USD, Yen, or even another blockchain asset like BTC or LTC, Bitcoin or Litecoin, and be able to transact with it on the Ripple network. An insurance is a method for an individual account holder on the blockchain to lock a particular asset, let's say gold, 
on the blockchain ledger. Similar to a gateway, after an insurance is made to the blockchain, you can then send it to other accounts, thus taking advantage of Ripple low fees. Trust lines. <clears throat> Trust lines are Ripple's way of securing insurance uh, insurance transactions, sorry, not insurance, insurance transactions between individual parties, as opposed to XRP, which can be sent to anyone. An insu issuance can only be sent to parties who both agree to open a line of communication. So while I can send and receive XRP from anyone in the world, I can only send the gold I claim to have to an account that actually trusts my word. This trust, necessary to have trust, is part of the issue that I don't like. But let's keep going. These three features are special because they gave Ripple the momentum to move into the financial world in a big way by allowing banks to create their own financial, their own network of partners and allow them to tra transact assets on the blockchain. They introduced a new way to cut transaction costs. This is the secret sauce behind Ripple's success. By being able to create low cost transactions on the network, financial transactions were able to take advantage of the blockchain. And by using XRP to secure every transaction, Ripple gave a powerful incentive for these institutions to use XRP. So there's the argument for XRP. Now, the the one of the big the best thing about Ripple is that it has more scalability than any other cryptocurrency right now. It's far faster by a long ways than any other cryptocurrency. It's a great potential payment solution when you're talking about just transacting payments alone. Let's continue. Who is Ripple's competition? This is part of the problem. In the emerging blockchain industry, every value driver is creating a, is creating a small industry. Monero and Zcash are leading the way for the privacy-focused cryptocurrencies. Ethereum, NEM, Waves, and a plethora of other blockchains are competing to be the top platform blockchain. Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Bitcoin Gold are competing to be the top cryptocurrency overall. There are other markets forming as well. When you look at the market for Ripple and try to find their competitors, something odd jumps out. Despite being one of the oldest cryptocurrencies, most people don't realize this. With the clearest use case, I agree with that, it has the clearest use case. There are a surprising lack of direct competitors for financial payments, at least financial payments for large corporate banks. Platforms easily have 20 plus blockchains all competing for Ethereum's place, but Ripple only seems to be competing with the Stellar Network and few other organizations. For as mature as Ripple is in the ecosystem, you would expect more. So where are Ripple's competitors? Interesting. It turns out that Ripple has very stiff competition, but you're not going to find them on the crypto market cap. Ripple, by the way, crypto market cap is just the, uh, is where you can see the price of all the current cryptocurrencies. Ripple's chief competition today is coming from the new class of cryptocurrencies called permissioned blockchains, as opposed to permissionless blockchain. With where anyone globally can join permission to blockchains require an invitation from an organization before you're allowed to join. Now, I want to just highlight this for a moment. The One of the biggest risks to cryptocurrencies, a lot of times people, new investors, newbies in this space, by the way, this is an investment advice. This is just information. Consider entertainment or satire. But take this with a grain of salt. When you start investing because something sounds cool and it just happens to be a cryptocurrency, Keep in mind that in some cases, the traditional markets can do the same thing. Traditional companies, traditional organizations can do the same thing. It's not necessary to have a cryptocurrency to compete. And that's the challenge. When you're making investments, typically, typically you want to invest in projects that are going to, uh, the actual cryptocurrency themselves is in high demand or is in need for the project. All right, let's continue on. Today, there are a handful of permission blockchains that are offering similar services that Ripple offers. These organizations include R3 Corda, Hyperledger, the Ethereum Enterprise Alliance, and Swift, Ripple's chief rival, at least according to Ripple CTO Stephen, Tom Stephen Thomas. These businesses are creating products similar enough to Ripple's feature set and partnership network that these organizations constitute the financial payment uh, network market. So why Ripple's market matters for XRP? This is important. If you accept that Ripple's competitors are permission to blockchains, 
then it's useful to compare their features to understand how, say, Swift's blockchain payment network might be useful, more useful than Ripple. One thing that jumps out immediately about every permissioned blockchain is that these networks don't have native assets, meaning cryptocurrency, despite offering the same basic services that Ripple can offer. Here's a statement about Swift and considering native asset. One area Swift will not be considering is generating its own digital assets or cryptocurrency, Granger said. This is at odds with other cross-border payment services, notably Ripple, whose digital currency XRP is used to conduct payments over its distributed ledger network. Here's another analysis from Philip Sander, Sandner comparing Hyperledger, Corda, and Ethereum. We're going to skip over this. Even Ethereum through EEA are creating permission blockchains such as JP Morgan's Quorum. Now, people don't even realize that. This is bad news for cryptocurrency in general, uh, these permissioned blockchains. I think it's bad news for a lot of things, but we'll get into that a little bit more. In part, in part of the, if part of the market was split and only half the market had native assets, this might be less odd. Diesel engines are still produced even after alternatives appeared on the market. But that fact that every major competitor has opted out of having a native asset is one that has allowed Ripple to control billions in value through XRP, signals a change in the market. What a lack of native asset means. This is important, especially if you are thinking, hey, Ripple, th this is the negative side of Ripple. That, that's, this is the important part. Let's think about the implications of this. Strong competition has appeared in the market, as to be expected. But instead of creating a native asset to secure the network, these competitors have decided to use another method, native identity management in this case, that secures the network. These blockchains can offer similar features without the need for an XRP-like component. We can argue whether Swift, R3 Corda, or Hyperledger really have a better set of features than Ripple. But that is beside the point. With these projects have shown, what these projects have shown universally disregarding native assets is that the component of Ripple is that that component of Ripple is no longer required to provide value. It's an obsolete component of the Ripple blockchain in the same way that CD drives were slowly eliminated from new PCs after flash drives became more common. Native assets for blockchain payments networks have a better alternative native assets for blockchain payment networks have a better alternative well, again the native asset is the actual currency created the token that's created so they're saying they don't need to create they're saying that it's obsolete to use a native asset to be able uh, to be able to function on these payment networks even if ripple remains the best payment network for financial institutions XRP remains a vestige of what Ripple Labs thought the market would become, but the market changed. Ripple's competitors will get better and stronger and financial inst institutions will start considering alternatives. With XRP sticking out as a sore thumb, even if Ripple is the best, it is not because XRP offers some great advantage. If anything, it's an additional cost that none of their competitors will have. That's important. Even if Ripple is the best, it is not because of it's not because XRP offers some great advantage. If anything, it's an additional cost that none of the competitors will have. Businesses care about their bottom line. Anytime something is an additional cost, that's not good for businesses. So therefore, that's a good strong reason they might not use it. How does this affect XRP? Again, XRP is the native asset of Ripple. Ripple still has a better partnership network, a more mature product line, and strong leadership. But with competitors like IBM and R3, Corda entering the industry, it is only a matter of time before the competition will get stronger. In this race, XRP offers, XRP offers no competitive advantage and only represents an additional cost. At the end of the day, Ripple Labs is valuable because of their ability to provide great value to financial institutions. But if an organization like SWIFT begins to win the market, Ripple Labs will be forced, well, I'm sorry, will be, Ripple Labs will be forced to respond. As Ripple already owns 55% of all XRP, it would be easy for their organization to either sell XRP as a market discount or give it away entirely to new organizations who want to join their network. Increasing the price of XRP does not strengthen their position in winning the financial institutions, mar institutions market. When competition gets, ex gets intense, XRP will be one of the first factors to be eliminated. 
XRP will be one of the first factors to be eliminated through either devaluing XRP significantly or giving it away entirely. Now here's the problem. They're not going to be able to totally eliminate it. If there's somebody buying and selling it, there's going to be a market. And as long as there's a market, the number's not going to be zero. So there's always going to be a cost as long as XRP has a cost. This is ultimately the fate of XRP. Wait, wait, sorry. This is ultimately the fate of XRP. It is at best a potential incentive to have new organizations join their businesses at, at worst an additional cost that is completely eliminated by giving away XRP or close to it. In either case, the value of XRP is simply not supported by its use case and will be unlikely to retain its value. So it's important to understand that Basically, there's two things to keep in mind. There's permission-based blockchains. And if you don't know what a permission-based blockchain is, I'll show you an example here in a moment. And these permission-based blockchains can occur, can exist without native assets. So that's important to understand. The native asset, the cost of doing business in XRP is just an additional cost. And businesses are not going to want to be able to pay that additional cost if they don't have to. And that cost adds up. Now, if the downfall to this is XRP is in some ways the greatest cryptocurrency token when it comes to just transference of value because of its speed, etc. So I don't know that it will ever go down to zero, but it's interesting because it is permission-based and because there's a company behind it, it's centralized. Now, what does that mean? Well, centralized, the whole purpose in having a blockchain is because you wanted to, well, the purists like myself want to have decentralized, trustless environments. What does that mean? Okay, think about this. Here's what a centralized network looks like, meaning the blockchain would be stored on every hub, every computer, every user, okay? And there's no one that can stop the storing of the blockchain. No one can stop the sharing of it. No one. Versus decentralized. I'm sorry. This is decentralized. Ah, sorry, I said that. All, I messed it all up. This is centralized. So what that means is, in every, and actually, this is so wrong. Neither one of these are the best examples. This is actually a better example of a centralized um, blockchain. Uh, a centralized blockchain is going to be one. A decentralized blockchain would just be a long chain that spreads off everywhere, which they're trying to create here. But they show one major point of centralization right here. At the end of the day. It's best to look at examples of a decentralized blockchain. Um, let's talk about this. Over the years, blockchain has become popular among investors due to it being an incorruptible ledger. When people talk about blockchain, they refer to decentralized or public blockchains like Bitcoin. Decentralized blockchain or public blockchains like Bitcoin. And other that anyone can access and join. But do you know blockchain technology isn't limited to being decentralized? There are certain centralized, aka private blockchains, that are very useful and prove beneficial for organizations when compared with public blockchains. Organizations that want to use the power of decentralized ledger to enhance and improve current functions use private blockchains. But why do they do so? Well, the main reason is so they can control it. Centralization, the concentration of control of an activity or organization under a single authority. This means that the centralized platform, there's a single point of contact, AKA a private hub. Decentralized, the movement of departments of a large organization away from a single administrative center to other locations. This means there's no, there's no single point of contact, all work on their own and the way they want, AKA peer-to-peer -peer network. Two most common examples, this is perfect. Think of a centralized network like Facebook, Google, or even YouTube. You can do whatever you want to on Facebook. You can connect with whoever you want to on Facebook. But at the end of the day, Facebook can close your account. They can restrict you. They can do what they want to because they own the platform. They control the platform. Same thing with Google. Same thing with YouTube. Decentralized, LimeWire. How come LimeWire has never been shut down, even though LimeWire has been accused, obviously, of copyright infringement or, or allowing the facilitation of downloading copyright um, copyright infringed documents and files and videos, but how come this never been shut down? Because it's decentralized. It can't be shut down ever completely. Same thing with BitTorrents. You can never completely shut down BitTorrents. Why? Because all you're doing is downloading from other users. 
There's no central server necessarily that's storing everything. So that creates a more of a decentralized network. When you have private blockchains, like it was is competing with Ripple, and arguably Ripple is, I mean, it's semi, they're calling it semi, what, semi permissionable. Just go ahead and call it private. It's private. This is the greatest risk, by the way, to cryptocurrency in general, as far as a payment method. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Most people want centralization. Most people want it. They 100% want it. People will say, no, I want freedom. I don't want people to control me. I want to do it myself. But over and over again, human na- humans, when left to their own devices, don't create great democracies, just so you know. They almost always end up creating authoritarian rule, meaning someone in charge. They always end up electing a king. They always, always, that's uh, it, human nature is how they've been done when they've been left to their own devices for years and years and years. I'll show you an example of this. On one of my videos, this video was titled Bitcoin Dying. I'll put the card in the top right-hand corner. You can go take a look at this video. But the title of it is Bitcoin Dying, basically. Bitcoin Dying, question mark. Um, And I was talking about that. And Adam, who I appreciate his comment, and we definitely went back and forth, but he said, do a video on how it will hit mass adoption. I agree. I would be surprised to see it go below 4,000. I'm planning to buy one Bitcoin with Fiat soon, but just waiting to make the play. And they said, hey, 7,000 looked cheap back in the summer. Now, the thing is, Adam is seeing, he's seeing price opportunity here, which is fine. People invest for to make gains all the time. But he's missing the real value of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a decentralized blockchain. He comes down here and he says, what do you think would it would take for Bitcoin to hit mass adoption? I'm going to do an entire video on this, but part of it is people need to want to trust themselves and choose to take personal responsibility over a central source. And I do have some fear that that may never happen. That is the risk about investing in this space in decentralized currencies because there is a possibility that that will never happen. And there is a possibility that people will choose to have governments set up blockchain digital currencies where governments control the blockchain. And Adam Scott has proof of this. He says right here, again, this is nothing against him. This is just human nature. It's food for thought. He says he thinks the key to making it uh, available for mass adoption is he says, I wouldn't say I'm the sharpest knife in the drawer. First of all, this is not true. Uh, I mean, he definitely put some thought into this, more thought than I think a lot of people. But he said, I wouldn't say that I'm the sharpest knife in the drawer when it comes to this stuff. But some kind of regulation, regulation, control that ensures against loss or theft, if that's possible, where obviously they can somehow retrieve the Bitcoin because they can't just create more. Crypto is too much like the Wild West for most people. And if you lose money with a stolen credit card, you get it back at least. That is a needed security that will interest more people. And I would also add a more ease of use. Yeah, I agree with that part. This is, this right here, I read this and my heart sunk because this is where most people are at. Most, and he's he's dead on when he says this is this is one of the things that holds people up. When people realize that there's no bank protecting you, there's no government protecting your transaction in a cryptocurrency space. If you lose your private keys, you simply lose them. It is up to your own personal responsibility. But there's a trade-off. Government could never actually take your money or, or government could never devalue your money. Government probably, for the most, most people don't have to worry about the government taking their money, but government inflates your money. And when government inflates your money, then you lose it through inflation. It becomes less valuable. So people still want permission-based blockchains. And so that part, Ripple being semi-permission-based, being a fast transaction, I mean, there's a lot of things going good for them, but unfortunately, they're just not going to be competitive. Uh, they're just not going to be competitive if there's a if the native asset, the XRP token, is required, and it remains to be seen. Again, you can also it's difficult to underestimate a strong, strong team, and they do have a strong team leading them without question. Um, I have I'm not invested in Ripple today, but I have considered it only because their team has a proven track record. They know what they're doing. I don't know that I, I I don't I don't like the fact that it's semi permission based blockchain, but I don't have to like it to see a potential income opportunity. Now today I'm not invested in it, and I don't know that I will. But you know what Adam said here is perfect. And I came down here and told him I said, um, 
Hey, I wholeheartedly agree with the ease of use is a big one. We've seen a lot of improvement in this area, but a lot more is necessary. I agree. With Bitcoin being decentralized, wouldn't that guarantee that there would be no way for a central authority to insure or insure against loss? In a decentralized environment, there's no central authority that can retrieve your Bitcoin. When he says um, some kind of regulation that insures against loss or theft, if that's possible, it's, it, it's not possible. It is not possible in a decentralized situation where obviously they can they can somehow retrieve the Bitcoin because you just who is they? They is a de is a centralized organization. They is a centralized organization. And a, the advantage to a decentralized blockchain it is trustless and it takes self personal responsibility to operate in a decentralized blockchain. That's it today. If you've been if you've been wondering what Ripple is and what it's all about, there you go. I'll put this article down below. Just know this, by the way. Also, I've got on my video a playlist about earning passive income with cryptocurrency. Go ahead and take a look at that. Um, I've got an entire playlist and it's growing. I'm adding to it all the time. It's an it's, it's you even if you have no money to invest in this space, but you want to get started in this space. You can get started with that playlist. And of course, as you go, the playlist also is, covers, you know, if you have an investment, different areas to invest. But the whole focus on that playlist is growing passive. Is, I'm calling it my crypto passive income strategy. Check that out. Should be at the top right hand of your screen right now. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up and comment below. What are your thoughts on Ripple? Do you love it? Do you like it? Are you a fan? Are you invested in it? What's your favorite part about it? Why do you think it's going to the moon if you think it's going? Or why do you think it's going to crash and burn? Let me know what you think. Have an awesome day.